The ANC says it acknowledges where the party has fallen short in the implementation of its policies. Now, the ANC also says that it's devised realistic measures in order to address its shortcomings. And reporting on the party's two-day annual Lukotla resolutions yesterday, ANC Secretary General Ace Mahashule said that one of the priorities is to strengthen local government using the district development model. Now, this model is led by the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs is uh, to ensure that local government becomes more effective. So to talk to us about this a little more, we have Dr. Nkosa Zana Dlamini Zuma, who is a member of the ANC NEC, and she's also the Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning, Dr. Dlamini Zuma. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start with that um, district development model. Now, uh, COCTA launched uh, the district development model in September last year. But um, how does this model work? And, and, and what's the difference between the district development model and the integrated development plan? Well, first, the district model is meant to make government work in an integrated and coordinated way not just the municipalities. Because at the moment, we were working in silos. Each, go each government department was doing its own work, the province its own, and the municipalities their own. And there was no integration. Whereas we are supposed to be one government with three spheres, distinctive but interrelated and interdependent. So what the district model tries to do is to get all the departments, the province, and the municipality to focus and address the challenges together and also the opportunities that arise in that district. Now, the integrated development plan is not replaced by the district model. What it means is that in the development of the IDP, the national and the province must be involved so that the, the municipality does not have a, a development plan that goes in one direction and the province has, goes in another direction and national goes again in a different direction. All the three spheres must contribute into the IDP and implement the IDP. So how are you hoping this is going to improve the lot of uh, municipalities and the communities that live within those municipalities? Well, first of all, it helps us to understand the district. Because what we do, we look into the district. Who is there? How many? Are they employed? What's the education level? What are the opportunities? how many households are headed by women and children, and what are the opportunities and potentials of that district. And therefore, when we budget and plan, we must be addressing directly the challenges and also what are the opportunities and taking advantage of the opportunities. For instance, if I were to make an example of um, OR Tambo, which was the first uh, district to be launched. One of the glaring things there was that more than 50% of the households are headed by women. And that the unemployment is above average and it's mainly young people. But also that the education levels and skills levels are below the national average. Already you can see there that where the concentration should be in terms of addressing the issues there. The other thing that we found was that it's one of the poorest districts, but also it has the biggest backlogs, water, housing, electricity, roads, and so on. So clearly we had not focused on the exact challenges and the potentials of the place, agriculture, tourism, the ocean economy can be a big contributor. But it means when we plan, we must realize that women and youth 
are going to be have to be at the center of our planning and of our projects because they are the majority and the majority of households are headed by women. But also what we do, we look at the municipalities that make that district and say, do they have the prerequisite skills and professionals to actually discharge their responsibility? And we found that in OR, there aren't sufficient skills, sufficient engineers, planners, and other professionals. So what we are going to do is to ensure that we get those professionals there, even if we can't get them for each municipality, but they can be there for the district, which means they can be shared by the different uh, municipalities. And we found that sometimes these municipalities are not able to utilize the resources like the infrastructure grants, because if you can't plan and you don't have engineers, you are not going to be able to, to implement. And then the grant money gets taken back. So what we're saying, the grant money must not be taken back, but we must supply the skills that are needed, because that grant is supposed to assist the people who live there. And if you take it away, the people are still there, their needs are not, um, are, are, are not satisfied. So the district model says, no, no, don't take the money away. Send professionals to assist. So that's um, the way we are also planning to change the way we've been working. We're not changing policy, but we're changing the way we have been implementing policy. Mm. Uh, just reading through that statement last night, uh, Dr. Uh, Dlamini Zuma, it, it sounded like the ANC is a bit stuck here because the things that you are mentioning now, um, one has to ask the question from the explanation that you've just offered. So what has been used to inform the planning? Because the information that you are putting out to us right now has been, is available. The statistician general is constantly putting out information that speaks to those very indicators that you are pointing out now. There are so many civil society groupings who are continuously producing reports, academic reports, uh, where people go into uh, these specific areas and those reports are available. So what has been used all along in order to inform the planning around these districts and municipalities? Well, I don't know what has been used, but what I can tell you is that it hasn't been used in an integrated manner. Each sphere of government has been working alone. Each department has been working alone. So what we are saying now is we should all use the same information and plan together so that environment, tourism, agriculture, water, human settlement, you name it, are together and address these together instead of addressing them in a different manner. The other thing that we have realized is that the, the, the budget has not been ring fencing maintenance. So even when there is infrastructure and bulk infrastructure roads, but the maintenance has been poor and therefore this infrastructure has been breaking. So we're saying to Treasury, no, you can't give money for a grant and specify what it should be used for without specifying maintenance because maintenance is so critical. So we realize things that were wrong and we're trying to correct them. And it's taken all of 25 years, Dr. Dlamini Zuma. I mean, this democracy was to, supposed to deliver a better South Africa, better conditions for the majority of South Africans. And what you are saying now, once again, is not rocket science. Why has it taken so long for the penny to drop on these issues? Well, I think let's, let's, let's say that there, there, there has been a lot of improvement. If you look at 1994, there's lots of improvements. But we realize that the improvements that are there are not sufficient. There is a lot that still need to be done. 
and we did a 25-year review. Remember when I was at the DPME, we were asked to do a 25-year review. And some of the things that I'm talking about, we realized in that 25-year review that you have been unable to maximize the impact of government because we've been working in silos and not working in an integrated way that should maximize the impact on the ground. Mm. But that, of course, is not the only reason uh, we know about the corruption, the malfeasance uh, that goes on, and it's more acutely felt in uh, the municip uh, municipalities because that's where service delivery actually happens. Uh, to your point about uh, the qualifications of uh, the people who are meant to implement all of these, uh, in 2018 already, um, uh, Dr. Zwelim Kize, who's the former minister of uh, COCTA, said that there were 94 of 193 municipal managers and 79 out of 218 chief financial officers who were properly qualified. So what has been done since then, since 2018 until 2020, as you and I speak this morning, to rectify that situation? Well, let me say that we, we agree with you that uh, the, the problems of corruption inefficiencies and people who are not qualified are felt more at the local government. And that's why in the Lehutla, we have been saying that the ANC must take um, responsibility and, ve and be very stringent in how it appoints public representatives. Because the public representatives that are appointed must be fit for the job that they are supposed to do because then from there if you've got uh, public representatives that understand and know what they are supposed to do they will then employ the right people in the administration but where the the the, the people are not fit we have been saying to the provinces, and that's why sometimes the provinces have been intervening in municipalities so that proper uh, qualified people can be appointed. That's why sometimes they appoint administrators so that that administrator can ensure that it employs proper people that are qualified for the job but also fill the vacancies because in some of the municipalities we find that there are vacancies that have not been filled. So it's very important to have proper people who understand what they are supposed to do. But also we need to separate the administration and the political leadership in a municipality. In some of the municipalities, you find that they, that separation is not really maintained. So you find councillors interfering or administrators doing things that should be done by councillors. So all those things we are trying to address. But we, we can't say we'll fix it overnight because it's, it's lots of municipalities that need to be uh, addressed and we are addressing them. The other thing that so, uh, we just, know just to that point, is if that I may interject. infighting if I, if I yes. may just interject before you make your next point, Dr. Dlamini Zuma. So uh, when you say it needs to be addressed and it's not an overnight fix, I, the figures that I gave to you came from 2018. So there's been more than a year to address the problems that existed. As I said, if you look at chief financial officers alone, 79 out of 218 were properly qualified. So in more than a year, what has been done to rectify that situation? Do we now have more than 79 properly qualified chief financial officers in municipalities? Yes, we do. Where, where we don't have, we may have administrators that are there to, to address that if the municipality has not succeeded in doing it itself. And that's why some of the municipalities are under administration because they are not able to do what they are supposed to do. But is that the solution? So then you bring an administrator to, bring, to try and fill the post 
and fill them with people who are able to do the job and who are qualified for the job. But let's also remember that some of the municipalities are very small and they don't have a revenue base. And also remember that the municipalities are supposed to raise their own revenue. And so we are saying to, to Treasury, let's change that funding model because some of the municipalities can never attract qualified people because they just don't have the resource base to pay those people. And that's why some of the money gets sent back to Treasury because it's not being used. Because if you are a small municipality in a rural area where most people are unemployed, some are indigent, you are not able to collect revenue like others. And in the more finding model, it's a one size fit all. It's expected that every municipality is able to raise the resources. So those municipalities are not able to. So that's why in part you are saying we must supply some of the, so, so some of the professionals from a district to be shared whilst we are trying to convince Treasury to change the funding model so that these small municipalities that are not able to, to generate sufficient revenue are supported. Mm. And then this question of placing municipalities under administration, the Northwest Province's uh, SCOPA, uh, they were on Morning Live uh, not too long ago, and according to them, the situation in the province currently um, uh, placed under Section 100 has actually gotten worse. In an interministerial task team that was led by you, um, uh, 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 that was uh, put together to monitor this, what's the situation? Are we seeing any improvement for those municipalities uh, that are placed under administration? In some were seeing improvement, in some were not. That's why, for instance, in Mamusa, in the end we had to dissolve the municipality because we were not getting improvement and we were not getting cooperation from the councillors that were there. And in the end it had to be dissolved and new councillors were to be elected. So. In some, there is some improvement, but in some, there, there, there isn't, and that's why we take action. And that's why we are also saying now, where the province, because remember, there are layers of intervention. The intervention that we see in the Northwest at municipal level is provincial, but where it fails, national must come in. That's why now we've taken a decision that we will intervene in certain areas where the province and the municipality are unable to act. But Mamusa is a very good example of where everything had been tried and in the end we had to dissolve the municipality. Well, unfortunately, we are going to have to leave it there because we are out of time, not because we're out of uh, talking points, Dr. Zamini Zuma. But thank you so much uh, for speaking to us this morning about uh, some of okay, the outcomes. Okay, you can invite me again. Indeed, there's so much to talk about, and I really would love to engage you. So we'll pick up on this at a later stage. But thank you okay. so much for speaking to us thank this you. morning.